Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In this video, we're going to show you guys how to set up and use external drives, specifically SSDs in DaVinci Resolve. We're using DaVinci Resolve Studio 18. However, it'll work exactly the same with the free version of DaVinci. Before we jump into the video, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 11, Windows 10, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so as a previous Final Cut owner, DaVinci Resolve doesn't have exactly as streamlined of a process in terms of using external media to store all of your project and render files. What I like to do personally is I like to store not only my project, render files, proxy files, and all of that, but I also like to store my media on these drives as well. I don't want to be taking up physical hard drive space on my PC because it's just going to go too fast, basically. So I have an SSD plugged into the computer Specifically, it is a two terabyte Samsung T7 Shield. I buy the Shield ones so that I can have them on the go and not have to worry as much. Basically, it's a little two terabyte drive with a shock absorbing case around it, and it has a USB-C port on it. So I do a USB type A on the back of the PC tower to the USB type C, and that pretty much stays plugged into the computer until it's full, and then I'll use a different drive. So it works pretty well. We are in no way affiliated with this brand of drives. It's just one that I happen to like. So let's go ahead and show you guys what that looks like on the computer. All right, so here is the drive itself. Let me just show the, show you guys the properties of the drive so you can see. It is a 2 terabyte or 1.81 terabyte capacity drive. And then we have 1.28 terabytes free. And we have our used space shown here. Now you may want to open the control panel and format the drive before you get started. And if that's the case, just open up the disk management from the control panel. We'll give that a minute to load here. And then whichever drive you select here, you can just right click and select format. I would do XFAT on the Windows system or you could do NTFS as well. Uh, but we're not gonna format it here in this case. And if you have a new drive, you may not even need to at all. All right, so I actually manually created these four folders that we see here. Now feel free to do this in any way that works well for you. I personally like to separate the sound from the media as well as the music from the media. So when I'm pulling new music for a video, for example, I'll download it from my web browser and then I'll just go ahead and place it into this folder, which we don't have any yet. And then I also have my sound design here. This is a folder that I use for all of my editing projects. And so whenever I'm importing into my media pool inside of Resolve, I can just reference this folder here. So for example, if I go into my ambient, uh, we have like, you know, rain sounds and residential park sounds and airplanes passing by, little things that can help with a general video project. So anyways, I'm going a little off course here. The important thing is going to be to create a video projects folder. And if you want to store media on it, I would recommend doing a media folder as well. Let's take a look inside of the media folder. Now what I like to do is separate these out by subfolders. And I'd like to um, basically list a description of what it is, as well as the date that I imported it. So if we click here into original media, I have a race that was done here in Austin. I got some footage of the race. I put it here in the in this folder and I just put all of the raw clips in there. And you know, some of them might have like raw clips from the a camera but separate audio or something like that. So if I click into something like that, here we have the raw clips, then the drone, and then um, some external recorder audio. So I like to kind of keep it all in one place in this original media folder. This is again, these are MP4, you know, Sony S log three files. Um, you can Keep it on your SD card if that's what you want to do. And you can still use the external drive for your project files. But I'm just, again, I'm just showing you guys how I basically offload all of the files onto this drive. Okay. Next up is the video projects. Now, if I click into here, we can see we have render and cache files. And these are automatically going into the drive every time I go into Resolve and start editing. All right. So with our drive prepared, I'm going to go ahead and open Resolve and we'll show you guys how to configure the remaining. Now, really quick, you can do this to already existing projects. For example, if you had the media stored locally and then you moved it to your drive, 
simply go into your media pool on your project and then right clicking on these clips, we can hit relink selected clips. And I'll go find the folder that contains these clips that I want, which is this one here. By doing that, you are basically back to um, however it was before. Okay, so the very next step is to go up to DaVinci Resolve here and we're gonna click Preferences. Now, as we can see underneath Media Storage, we can add or remove. Yours will probably have an automatic directory. And so let's say I go ahead and remove this. Sorry, select it, then remove it. And then if I click Add, we can go to our drive and then click on that folder that we created earlier. And this is gonna be where the cache files and the render files, all that stuff are gonna be stored. So we'll select that. We'll click save and then it says, changes will take effect next time Resolve is started. So I'll go ahead and close Resolve. We're gonna open it back up. Okay, so we're back in Resolve. I'm gonna make a new project for demonstration's sake. We're gonna title this Walter Wedding. This is one of my wedding uh, clients that I still need to begin the editing process for. Uh, and before I even do anything here, I'm gonna go up to File and we're gonna select Project Settings. Now, I would recommend just double checking this every time you start a project, although for me, it's been automatically defaulting to the working folders. So again, scrolling back down in the Master Settings here, we have the working folders, click underneath each one of these, and again, just simply go back to the Video Projects folder underneath that external drive. You can do that for each. And we can see that it's auto-generating the proxy media, cache clip, and gallery folders. So all we have to do is select our master folder and click Save. All right, so I'm in the Media Pool section here, and I want to start importing my media. I'm going to create a new bin. We're going to call this A7S3. I want another new bin inside of the master for my drone shots, and I want another new bin in here for the external audio. And maybe I also want sound design. All right, so I might do something like this. Now I'll click inside of the A7S3, control I to import. And then just going to my original media, I'll go find the uh, folder in which I want. And then here I'll do control A to select everything and we'll click open. Now when this comes up, I typically hit don't change because I already have the project configured in a way that I want. And then I'm just gonna repeat the process here. We can see we've imported all the clips. I'm gonna repeat the process all the way down. So I'll go ahead and grab the drone clips. Again, just control A in there and click open. External audio, same thing. And then lastly, I just imported my sound design. And now when I go into my timeline here, let this load for a second. Okay, so when I go into my timeline and I start dragging clips and I start color grading stuff and I start doing all of that, it is all gonna be saved to that drive without consuming any of my own personal storage on my PC. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions about any parts of that process, drop those in the comment section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Again, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Server, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software, we'll put links down below. We strongly encourage any video topic ideas that you may have. And as always, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.